Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on April 10th, 2025. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to The Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always starting out here, looking at the last 48 hours of imagery on our sun, as we have a pretty active sunspot region coming into view, as well a little calibration of satellites. That's what that little flash was there. Looking at the last 48 hours, incoming big plasma prominence stretching from the surface on the right-hand side there, as well, active, fiery sunspot region cresting into view. This may be a doozy. There's quite a bit of instability ahead of it with plasma filaments and as well sunspot regions. Looking at outgoing imagery here, again, sorry for the little jiggity-jiggity of the satellites beyond my control here solar dynamics observatory mixed with daily events worldwide active sunspot regions the last 48 hours and as well we have the outgoing coronal hole region solar winds are now starting to come down but this thing seems to be stretching across the southern hemisphere we could have an elongated coronal hole wind stream Increasing the geomagnetic instability. Looking at 171 angstroms here. Amazing images. So grateful to have you aboard. So grateful to be able to have all this open source media to share with you. Having a look now at our sunspot regions in motion. Right now we have seven Earth-facing sunspots. And as noted... There is a pretty large, sizable sunspot region turning into view. 4060 is its name, and it is right along the equator. This is a look at our current sunspot, sunspots. 4056 is quite centrical. 4060 is growing. Space weather conditions currently, there are none to report. No radio blackouts or solar storms. Solar winds are coming in at 437 kilometers per second. That is down from the last few days. Solar X-ray flux only showing the minor M-class solar flare reported yesterday. Strong C-class solar flare, and it has been hanging out in the C-class range for quite a few days now. Geomagnetic activity sitting at a KP2. Space Weather Prediction Center here showing their latest space weather spiral. There will be another one put into these models as a coronal mass ejection has taken off from, I think, a backside region of the sun, or at least the northwest region you'll see here on Lasco. Watch the top left region of the disk. Right there. So still waiting for the rest of the images with this coronal mass ejection. And it looks like it was on the back side of our sun. But look at all that fiery activity turning into view from that newly acquired sunspot region 4060. Cresting into view. Here's a closer and slower look at the most recent coronal mass ejection. Stay tuned. We'll be stitching in more imagery as they come in. Tonight's Aurora view line and tomorrow's. Tomorrow's will be a little more prevalent. Likelihood of Aurora. Chances are good for mostly Canada and western parts, northwestern parts of the United States. Earthquakes. Now, I put out an earthquake warning video yesterday, and boy, oh boy, we are above average, over 300 earthquakes. And look at the, all the widespread activity. Mid-Atlantic Ridge, action back at the Caribbean Plate. Notable 4.3 here, Somalia. Activity up into the Indian Plate and Tibetan Plateau. Largest earthquake past 24 hours. Agats, Indonesia with a 5.5 magnitude earthquake. The deepest being Timor-Leste, 174 kilometer depth. Aftershocks continue. Papua New Guinea. And it's all of a sudden gone completely quiet in the Tongra Mica Plate. Heads up, everybody. This is a sign of something is brewing. Earthquake warning video yesterday. Increase in seismicity. 
The increase in seismicity has been here in California as there's a couple swarming regions. USGS reporting 312 earthquakes past 24 hours. That is above average. Normally we're around 200. So these earthquakes are still on the rise. Check out the live stream anytime and we'll be watching this together. Having a look across the United States, notable activity up into the Pacific Northwest, right into Washington and Victoria Island. But through the geysers, a swarm is occurring as there's been over 60 earthquakes at Cobb Mountain, the geysers. Earthquakes along the San Andreas Pinnacles, California. And that's stretching right down into Westmoreland at the Sultan Sea. 27 earthquakes reported just in the past three hours. So this is still going. Calipatria. I was just looking at this region yesterday and there were zero earthquakes and it had been pretty quiet for quite some time. So I was expecting something. I didn't think it would come as quick as me researching it, but it is. So earthquake swarm, Sultan Sea. The geysers are going, minor seismicity, Tennessee. Other than that, not too much to report. The earthquakes are on the rise, waiting for a big one. Earthquake warning video put out yesterday. We've got a full moon coming up. Multiple factors. Heads up, Wanda Fuca Plate. Eerily quiet, Pacific Northeast. Up into Alaska, even. Central America. And now, because of the earthquake lull in Fiji, we can expect something to pop down there. Multiple active volcanoes. Hopefully, they release enough pressure and we don't get a large earthquake. But heads up, you live in an earthquake-prone zone. Stay tuned to Daily Events Worldwide. We'll give you the updates as they happen. We'll let you know whether or not there's a tsunami with a large earthquake. Heads up. Now let's have a look at the SO2 forecast brought to you active and erupting volcanoes noting a pretty large eruption hawaiian island and as well in southern japan with sakurajima northern hemisphere inundated by sulfur dioxide emissions big eruption of philippines canlon and as well white island new zealand and central africa mediterranean even Reunion Island, Mauritius, and increasing SO2 coming out of Chile, parts of southern South America. Now let's have a look at world weather here, brought to you by Windy.com. Low pressure system lingering around and slowly grinding up the East Coast, United States, and into the Atlantic provinces by Monday. Then Alberta Clipper comes in. Bring some snow to the Atlantic provinces and quite possibly parts of northern Ontario. Multiple systems all coming from the north here. Going to th keep things cool, but this low coming in from the equatorial region of the Pacific, that's going to really warm things up right across the nation. But long-range forecast, another low comes from the north, grinding into the Pacific Northwest. Higher elevations will see snow, but... Temperatures will be on the rise. Overlooking Australia, Africa, Southeast Asia. Cyclone still is encroaching parts of Northern Territory of Australia. Waves of storms and moisture coming out of the Tibetan Plateau, racing across Japan. As well, watch for strong systems and a lot of moisture heading across parts of South Africa. Look at those systems building and growing off of China this week. We are going to see some record-breaking typhoons in the Pacific, I think. Stay tuned, because this is all solar-driven. Speaking of which, let's have a look at tornado counts already for this year, when we've seen already over 430 touchdowns. And look at... This, compared to every other year, this is the third strongest tornado season since it was recorded, since it's been recorded back in 2010. 
And I think this has a lot to do with our solar cycle progression, sunspot numbers, as we are right now in a solar maximum. Go through a minimum and then a maximum and a minimum and a maximum every 11 years. But every so often, you get some pretty strong solar cycles or some very weak solar cycles during maximums. And that kind of happened here back in the late 1800s, 1900s. More specifically, 1895, when we had one of the strongest space weather events our Earth, our Earth has experienced, a.k.a. the Carrington event, which was a very strong X-class solar flare Earth-facing and fried a lot of electronics that were hooked up around our world, meaning electrical poles and everything else. This cycle looks eerily similar to the cycle that we went through during the Carrington event. This is why daily events worldwide is here for you, keeping humanity aware and prepared, going through these solar cycles together, planetary cycles. It's all connected and all solar driven. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily too. Bye-bye now.